Okay, so uh, one of the, you know, I was very, I um, just wanted to talk a little bit about levels of consciousness of different spiritual vibrations and, uh, and the benefits of doing spiritual work. Uh, and, you know, we do uh, a course in miracles and a course is like removing, okay, oh yeah, a course in miracles is like uh, removing uh, the blocks to love, you know, in simple form. And what, what is the block to love, uh, which is the highest vibration, is the ego, and according to the Course in Miracles. And all the, all the blocks, all the belief systems, negative belief systems, all the shame, guilt, and fear, or trauma that is uh, residing within the ego. You know, my journey, which um, I've shared before, was that I was at a very low, what I call a low level, uh, low vibration. I had a very, very big ego, very dominant ego. I, about 18 years ago, I was working in the stock market. And what I realized now was because, you know, my ego was so inflated, I had so much fear, uh, fear, guilt, shame uh, within me. And I used addiction. One of my addictions was uh, compulsive overeating, but I was also a workaholic. Uh, had other addictions, and addictions are a great way of um, uh, just escaping having to let go of your feelings, you know, release feelings and go to a higher vibration. So when I was at those low uh, vibrations, it's like when, when my ego was that inflated and I was using food and work and bad relationships, um, it's like automatically when the ego is inflated, one is automatically attracted to everything that's negative and destructive. There was a natural attraction at that level, at the age of, age of 30. It had my, I had been an addict my whole life. At the age of 30, it had come to a rock bottom, where I was, at, in all of my addictions, I was making suicidal choices because there was so much negativity. Symbolically, you know, when one is holding guilt, then the... Um, the energetic message in guilt is, I deserve punishment. If you haven't released the guilt within the ego, you unconsciously seek punishment. And if you have a lot of guilt or fear or, or shame within the ego, residing with the ego, then you'll unconsciously choose in everything you do destructive things. And I was working in the stock market in an extremely addictive, aggressive uh, environment, which was, you know, uh, which was um, s such an environment where you could literally work yourself to death. Uh, I was doing food addiction, in which I was trying to eat myself to death. And I was choosing relationships, you know, which were extremely dangerous. Uh, and so, so, so it's like, with that, without having done the inner work and let go of my negative beliefs and felt out, I wanted to hide from all these feelings I never wanted to feel just by when I would eat donuts or sugar, I could escape from those feelings. But at the end, I wasn't just eating to escape, I was eating to knock myself out of consciousness. I'd go to, I'd go to Chinatown and you'd have the eat as much as you want restaurants. <laughs> and uh, you'd have like a dingy basement, dark half lit basement. They're, mm. they're made for overeaters because it's, you, it has to be anonymous. Nobody wants to see you go back and back again and again for more food. You know, so, and I was literally trying to knock myself out. I didn't want to live. I would eat that much food. I was working extreme hours. And I'd chosen a company which was extremely addictive and extremely unhealthy with an extreme workaholic culture. And there was rewards for having a big ego. And there was definitely nothing in there for being spiritual in that environment. Uh, and I was choosing relationships, you know, which I won't say on camera, but they were, they were, they were destructive in nature. So... But then, you know, I was, I was suddenly on a business flight back facing death. So when I hadn't done spiritual work and when I was in the, the pathway of a negative spiral, every choice uh, that I made was destructive. And that was, I didn't realize it, but unconsciously I was choosing everything to kill myself. You know, I, I have had an unconscious attraction to death. But luckily uh, for me, you know, on a business flight back from New York to London, my feet swelled up. And, I was, and then I was admitted to the Royal Free Hospital with kidney failure and doctors were rushing to save my life. And um, realising at the age of 30 that I was about to face death, I surrendered in the hospital bed 
and had a, a spiritual experience, a heavenly time with spiritual experience. And I realized that in surrender, it was like the light of God flooded in. And that uh, it was a recognition that the solution to facing death through, through addiction and, being, and this unconscious attraction to everything that was destructive in life uh, would be to find, to find that, the light of God through a spiritual pathway. And it was like that was the thing, and I was led to, I was given a DVD of a guy called Dr. David Hawkins later on. Um, he's, he's, uh, it was a sponsor of a guy called Bill Wilson, and hence I got connected to, you know, if people who are listening to this video have any kind of food addiction problem, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, you know, sex and love addiction, whatever it is, problems, there's a 12-step program out there uh, for every type of thing. But I did, I did do programs like uh, for food and everything, and I did the Course in Miracles that was advised to me, which is a very advanced spiritual text, which we do in the group, to release everything within the ego. Also studied under enlightened teachers. And what I found, and Dr. Hawkins, laid, as your vibration, as you release all the repressed feelings, and you cancel all your beliefs, and you just feel everything out, your ego is dissolving, and you go up to a higher vibration. And as you go up to these higher vibrations, you start to make more healthy choices, you see. Uh, so, and when you get up to, when you release all that fear and shame and guilt and all those repressed traumas, and you start canceling the negative belief, the software, if you like, that you're operating by, you start to be attracted to everything that is good, you see. So you start to like uh, spiritual relationships, spiritual careers, spiritual things, like the ego loves drama, excitement, chaos, danger, all of those things. As you start releasing those repressed feelings, you know, it's an escape. If you're feeling f deep within you, you're feeling fear and trauma or guilt, you love like an addictive jolt. You love like a, you know, like a, a chocolate cake or a dangerous relationship or a, or a drama-filled career. So that starts to, as you release all this, spirit, this stuff through spiritual and therapeutic work as well, then you start to get attracted to things which are aligned with peace and serenity and an absence of drama and danger. So, you know, those, those relationships which are serene and peaceful and calming, you, you more are attracted to those. Whereas before, like when I was in active addiction, I'd be attracted to anything that was bad and repulsed by anything that was good. And as you get more spiritual, you're attracted to those things which are serene and peaceful and give you long-term serenity and calmness, and you start to become repulsed by those vibrations, those careers, people, places, and situations, which have a lot of drama, excitement, addictive hits, or danger. You start to be, so you have this switch over at a certain point by, by doing spiritual work. So just doing any kind of spiritual work, I mean, the things that I, I, I really like are which we which we practice here, feeling the feelings, uh, the observer. Uh, I like the works of uh, Dr. Hawkins, which explains that at each vibration, as you do the work, your whole it's like you sink to a different level of the universe. Like in London, like uh, in London, when I was in active addiction, you know, I'd be attracted to com companies which were dangerous, relationships that were dangerous. I can find it all in London when I'm at a low vibration. Uh, restaurants which are, you know, uh, dangerous, but also in London, London is holographic. There is also, like, as I become here, I, I love spiritual groups, like I'll go to 12-step groups, I'll go to Course in Miracles groups, I'll visit the local teachers of enlightenment. That's what I like nowadays, whereas, you know, you know, whereas before I'd be, you know, looking for those dangerous aspects in London. And uh, it's good. Also, you know, one of the things with, uh, you know, Hawkins talked about this, like everything, every person, place and situation has a vibration, you know, and you're, and that's really helpful to know, like classical music has a very high spiritual vibration if you play it in the background. If you want to play gangster rap music in the background, it's going to what they call entrain your consciousness to that vibration. You know, certain, you know, rap clubs or or a classical concert, a spiritual group, or, I don't know, um, could have a rave party or a spiritual group. You know, the choice is quite different in what you do. So, one of the things that I, once I learnt about these different vibrations, you can start to actively make different choices. 
but it does require a lot of work and um, yeah just in releasing and most of, a lot of the work is inner work you know a lot of the work is inner work on releasing those deep emotions and those belief systems